Yeah. Right, so we're here in Pattaya and we're at Muscle Factory here, training with my man here. We're going to do a big back session, mostly rowing. So I'm like two and a half weeks out now, so this is what, you know, I'm always showing you guys what I'm doing, you know, this is the process. Two and a half weeks, I'm trying to go for pro card this time. I'm looking the best I ever have, so I'm really happy. So I'm getting pushed by my man here today. Look at the size of it, man. <laughs> Off-season off versus two weeks out. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. benefit I'm getting of this is, this is the position I kind of want to be in next year, yeah. where you're like, now's pro card time. So just going to take a good look at what JB's doing today and uh, get the notebook out, take some uh, yeah. secrets of bodybuilding. Yes, so <laughs> you yeah, can't get straight to it, man. I like to start with 20, 15, add weight, increase weight each time. So the first few are kind of warm-ups, if you want to call them. Yep. And then that last one or two is like a working set. Yep. But I like to go through all the rep ranges, attacking all the fibers, yep. so you're hitting every, everything. There's nothing, Pyramid nothing's all left, the way up. Yeah, nothing's left to chance. And that's how I feel for me, that works best for me. Because yep. then you're hitting all the angles, all the rep ranges. You're still getting those heavy sets. The lowest I'll go on rep ranges is probably eight. Yeah. And if I can't do eight, it's, 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 it's too heavy. Yeah. And I just find I'm just going to get injury long term, and it's no point. Yeah. And you keep full, and you get that round muscle belly look with the higher rep ranges as well. Yeah. I don't know how, you, how what you do. Or well, certainly at this stage enough. when you've got to kind of drive as much food into your muscles as possible. Exactly. And, well, I would never go lower than six reps. No, no, that would be like the that lowest the of the lowest. Right. Pyramid all the way up. Yeah. You, would you do this typically with every exercise? I kind of start with heavier stuff first. I may do a drop set on this, yeah. and then another heavy, heavy thing, and then I'll go more into cluster set different kind of rep ranges really intensify so instead of just doing poundage the whole way through I'll try to do more intensifiers midway towards the end contraction more about the contraction the feel yes still heavy ish yeah. but more about the volume getting the blood in there feeling the muscle so it can always vary sometimes I may feel strong sometimes I don't yeah. so it all depends on how I'm feeling and how I attack that thing I don't really stick to a one set routine I'll have set kind of movements I like to always do, like I like to always do the top yeah. row because I really want to bring up the back and get all the lumps and bumps yeah. and then I work my way down and I like to do like a, a lap pull down from the side. That's the two movements I always will keep in right. but then I'll just depend on what gym I'm at, you know? Yeah, yeah. You just go by feel, you say right, right I'm going to go with that. You know you're attacking the, the parts you need. Stage? Are you managing a certain amount of sets per workout and managing volume based on fatigue or are you going by feel? I'm going by feel mostly but at this point I try to not overdo it. Yeah. I, I try to do like 80% <laughs> whereas normally in the off season I just keep going right yeah, yeah. because you've got the energy you've got the fuel you've got the recovery but two and a half weeks out I've got to be more sensitive a little bit more it. aware of that right? yeah just just back off a little bit but not so much that you're not going to get a pump and you're actually going to get something from that workout but just be sensible and I think that comes with time but you knowing when to just stop and knowing and knowing how long to take in between sets because sometimes I'll give it that extra 30 seconds more when I know if I do that I'll get those extra two reps and I'll get more out of it instead of you know when people go oh, back to back back to back yeah back to back's great but you got to know when to oh, just there's a time and a place <laughs> yeah and I think that just comes with experience and over time you're probably the same right yeah you figure it out you know what your body responds to what recovery times and things you need when you need to manage volume yeah. very specifically yeah. when you can go by feel no, like yeah. you say, these things come in time. Though. I kind of know when to push it and when to pull back, especially now. I don't want to overtrain. All right, let's go. Yeah. Fucking hell. Throughout my whole time training, where I'm trying to think of detail, this is what I always say in my videos. I'm thinking of the details when I'm still a bit fat in the off season. I'm still thinking about those details, even though you can't see them. Because you've got to understand that those are the parts that matter when you're on stage. That is true development. It's not just all about mass. Yeah, mass is important, right? But you've got to have the quality with that mass. And you've got to have all the little lumps and bumps, especially on the back. When you turn around, you've got all the detail. That's what's going to win. That's what's going to beat the guy next to you. You know, is having that true development, all the little parts of the back popping up you know if you don't have that you're not gonna you're not gonna win all right here we go this one's set up oh. 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 now we're working 
Anakin. <laughs> the top of his delts, do you know what they remind me of? You know when you see Godzilla just go down into the water and you just see, you just see the spines, the big one and then the small one and then they fan That's out. That's a good look, right? <laughs> That's a good look. I like, that. I like that. I like that. Based on my strengths, I'm not, I'm not the biggest guy, right? I've got a little bone structure. Yeah. So in my head, if I can look as 3D as I can, like Phil Heath, he used to be 235 when he, yeah. when he was winning against guys that are 280. Yeah. But he looked just as big. First set yeah. for warm up, but after that, gets yeah. Fun. No, heavy with reps all day, all day, every day. Let's go. Yeah, come on. Go. Oh, oh, good. Three, four. Big pull, come on. Uh, Drag it back. Uh, all you, all you. Uh, come on. Hey, uh, come on. Uh, all you, let's go. Man, man, twelve. And that's Ooh. why. You shouldn't feel like a zombie at this stage of prep, otherwise you're you not going to be able to it. train like that and then your physique will suffer for it. It's in the gym matters. Number as one. much as you want to be low in carbs, yes, you need to have enough to be able to get through the workout and not come in and just do half-assed. Because if you're doing half-assed, you're not going to look good on stage. You're just, you're just not going to. You've got to keep it guessing. If you keep doing the same thing forever and end, it just knows, what it's, it knows what's about to happen. Why would it stimulate? Why would it change? Why would it adapt? <laughs> We're human beings, right? We adapt. That's why muscle grows, an adaptation to stress. So if you're coming in doing the same stresses each week, the body's like, oh, this is easy. Why, why do I need to adapt? Come in and start doing different things. Tomorrow, hopefully, you get an ache. You see it all the time. Yeah. You always see those familiar faces in the yeah. gym that have just looked exactly the same for three years. Yeah. And they're doing the same thing. The same weights, they're not progressing weights. Their reps don't look any better than they did two years ago. And they're not eating. That's mainly. They're not eating. That's what happens when you see people in the gym. Everything's progressive. Everything. Yeah, you've got to progress in the food, the training, your mindset. You know, all of that has to change to progress. Can't stagnate in this game. Crushes your balls. <laughs> you still got balls at the stage? Still got, still got balls. Jesus Just Christ. I have to copy your cycle. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, one, two, Let's go. three. Go. <laughs> First one up, all you. And two, three. three. Come on. Four, oh. five, let's get to eight, come on. Six, five, five, five. One more. Good. Ten. Easy work. Easy work, come on. One, two, one, three, one, four, five. I've got you, come on. Six, let's go. Seven, let's go. Eight, two more. One more. Duck. It's not easy. <laughs> How many reps so far? I got a thousand reps. <laughs> <laughs> They're going heavy, heavy, heavy. A lot of people go and try and go heavy in progressive overload. And miss all the other progressive. But I find if you all get into a sticking point with strength, say like you've maxed out strength, drop the weight a little bit and do tons more reps. Get to the 20, 30 mark. And I guarantee that adaptation, when you go back to lifting heavy, you're like, wow, this is, this is fucking easier. Well, I'll start on there as well. Yeah. yeah. More time under the weight, more practice. Those time under be tension, better. yeah. I'm not a power lifter. No. I'm not trying to just get stronger and that's it. Four more, let's go. Aye. Yes. Eight. One more. Eight. Good. What I did my research on was steroid.com. Okay. Do you remember that? This was the first ever site that would told you any information about what steroids are, what they do, side effects, what type of courses you need to do, how, how many you should do at one time. And that's my basis of my knowledge. And from that, I just trial and errored. I elaborated myself basically, but within a clever reason. I didn't just pump myself full of stuff because somebody in the gym said it. You know, I did my research. I understood, I understood what, what I was taking and what it would do to me. And I did trial and error to a certain degree. Sometimes I made, made, made mistakes, not, not enough of something or too much of something, but never so much that it, it, it would not you know, do me harm sort of thing. I, I think everyone at one point has done a bit too much trembolone and you learn over time that you only need a minimal dose to, for it to work. Too much of anything is not good for you. But if you were to take antibiotics, you don't take double the antibiotics. You don't take half the antibiotics you take the right amount for the period of time that you're meant to take it. And I feel that's the same for, for a course. You don't undertake, you don't overtake, you take the right amount for it to do its job. And that's, uh, and that's it. Metabolize things differently. What, and and, and the body deals with things differently. Because sometimes someone would need three, 400 tests, they, they could get good results. Some are like me, I think for the, because the amount of years I've done it, I need at least 500 to 1,000 in me to see a good result. 
Whereas putting 300 in me just past the theological range, I, 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 don't, I don't really get much out of it. Yes, science will say that's all you need. Yeah, that's cool. But when I do that, I don't feel the same as if I was doing six, 700. I feel that's the sweet spot for me between 600 and maybe 750. I feel like that is the sweet spot. Not any negative parts to it, no side effects, but at the same time, getting what I need from it. Uh, but, but a lot of these guys these days, which I'm not saying is wrong or right, but they say minimal, minimal, minimal is all you need. And yeah. To start with. Yeah, to start with. But when you've been doing it six, 17 years like me. Yeah, I mean, There's no way I'd hit 15 reps on this side if I just no. fucking did it that side. No, I always like to give myself 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then jump on because, like I was just saying, you need that rule. You're still using a lot of calories to, to get that down. If you're doing both at the same time, different story. If you're doing one at the same time, you need a break in between you know, to get the most out of both sides. You don't want to be doing 15 one arm, 10 on the other, because you ain't got the energy back. Ah. Everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's body responds different. If I trained with somebody the same weight, same height, and I ate what I ate, and they ate exactly the same, it doesn't mean we're gonna grow the same. It means nothing. Genetics plays a part, massively, and just how the body absorbs and breaks down foods, how it, how it takes the gear, what we were saying earlier, you know, Everybody metabolizes things different and that's what's so good about bodybuilding because there is no one size fits all and that's you always you're always trying to figure out this jigsaw puzzle the, and even in diets what, what worked for you last year doesn't work for you this year because every year your, your body resets it grows new blood cells everything always changing and adapting so there, there is no do A, B, C, D, oh I'm in shape no it's every time you do a diet everything works differently I don't know how Even you feel. Even with you, every year yeah. yours is going to be different. Different. You're a different person. Different person. You, you, you're, you're bigger. Yeah. We we'll do 10, then 10 second break. 10, yeah. 10 second break. Come on, Jay. Two weeks out. Come on, the motherfuckers. Come on. Big win, well factor. Oh. 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 10. Come on. This is all you just set. No well here. Come on. Eight. Three. Oh. Eight. Eight. Ten. Let's fucking get it, baby. What? Two weeks out. So let's go. Come on. Ten. One. Two. Ten. Easy. Three. Eight. Six. All the way back. Come on. All Ten. you. Eight. 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 All you. Eight. All you. Come on. Ten. Beautiful. Let's see how you look. Depending on what time I compete, I think I'm all in the afternoon, so I yeah, probably yeah. need another one. You'll probably have a meal or another, two. Yeah, more yeah, food, but then another half yeah. half diazide in the morning. And by the time I get on stage, eating all day, yeah. still drinking at least five, water, water, five yeah. litres, yeah. I'll be ready to go. Yeah. I'll be sure. on the money, salt before I get up. Well, do it then, if you know that, do it. Yeah. Like if you're not sure, sure, do the lineal thing, but you go, okay, let's go 400, 400, 500, yeah. 600, and, and see until we get close. Because our game plan yeah, in Romania, know, you know, you know. and come back from my, from my injury, yeah. we tried to suck down to a light heavy, and I did. I got down to a light heavy, 196 pounds. I got down to it. And then because it was Romania, you, you check in two days or three days before. Yeah, awesome. So then we had two days of filling up. How much did you fill? I went up to 206 on stage. Well, that's not massive. That's a 196. I put on 10 pounds. You look good. I look fucking good. Yeah. I just what wasn't you conditioned. Like a I look flat as fuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you'll probably find that probably after one more off season. I'm going to be a top end. Woo! Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Always known for my shoulders. My arms, no. I've got white people arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got good arms and good calves. Everything else sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, like we were saying earlier, is it, it, everybody grows in different areas. You know, some genetically, he grows arms easy. I don't. I grow shoulders, e shoulders easy. He may not. I don't know. And everybody's different, that's why every training program's got to be designed. After a while, once you've built up a certain amount of muscle, and say I'm, I've got a client and I can see what areas are growing easier than others, I can then design a program around their physique and to prioritise body parts that take a bit more. Uh, and that's the beauty of bodybuilding, you know, like, no one's the same, you know. It takes time to figure that stuff out as well. Yeah. You need time in the gym to figure out what does grow and what, and yeah. what doesn't. Like when a client messages and say oh, after three weeks of training they're like oh my shoulders are lagging or my legs are lagging I'm like you just you how just do you started. know you got, you got to give talk, it six, months, six months to a year yeah. I had a guy recently say that he goes oh mate two weeks in he's like I'm not happy with my body bro I'm not I'm not saying it's you I'm not disrespecting you or your or your knowledge it's just I said mate it's two fucking weeks yeah I said, I said give it 
Give it three months. Makes you wonder what fucking Instagram pages uh, yeah, they're following, yeah, yeah, right? I, Who's telling you this takes that, two That's what I mean. He thinks he, after two weeks he's going to transform. I'm like, your body's just getting... You've just started from scratch. You've had a break. You get back into it. Your body's not going to respond instantaneously. It's going to take a few weeks for the body to recognise, OK, I'm taking in food here, training here, and then you'll start seeing results. Do you know what this tells me, though? So this is like... But it's a common knowledge stuff. Pretty common knowledge that it takes a lot more than two weeks to build a good physique or to <laughs> even see a single change. Yeah, yeah. So when I hear stuff like that from clients, it makes me question how invested they are into this journey when they haven't bothered to do any initial research on how, long how muscles takes. grow, yeah. how long this stuff takes, what's involved in that journey I'm about to pay for and invest in. And they haven't done that. They've just dived straight into the deep and said, I'm going to get a coach, he'll, he'll get me there in two. So then straight away, if you haven't done that initial, initial tiny little bit of homework, yeah, that yeah. foundation of work, yeah. I don't think there's any chance that person is going to stick to no, it. No, they'll, they'll give up. I was telling him, look mate, you're going to have to stop overthinking, stop being a big girl's blouse, and just get on with it. Yeah. it and it really started to get on my nerves. I was like, mate, just, just get on with it. Yeah. Stop moaning, stop overanalyzing everything, yes. and just do. Okay, let me do the thinking, let me do the worrying. If I don't see a result, I'll correct it. You just do, yeah. and I lead. You do, yeah. and it, it, you know it's do like you know, a lot of the time that tough love works. I have to be tough love. And they go, all right, and then they do that for a few months, and the results are there, and they're like, oh, I and get then it. they believe you. Yeah. But then there are those ones that don't do that, and unfortunately, you got to drop them. Oh, 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 oh. It's You. Come on, it's all Sit. you. Get it. Oh. Yes. Yeah, lean back a little bit. Squeeze on that. Yeah. Just keep that's very isolated on that. Wrong boy. About progressive overload on this at all. It's just, tension. It's just the tension last finisher to get the blood in those areas that you won't normally use and that you know that rhomboid muscle is being worked which the which which is the popping like, when you can't really see the detail in your back you're holding a bit of fat still do it in the off season even though you can't see it because then when you come into prep you're going to really notice the detail on your back that you didn't have the year before pumped a little bit it's better light in here isn't it very symmetrical very complete Yeah. And then I was like, well, it's a lack of spread, not a lack of flex. Yeah, oh, it's right, a spread. Mate. Considering I'm flat. They're already gone by that long way. That's a good shot. <laughs> Big ding. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> 